my, my coaching lens, developing my core values. Um, it really was a progression over time, as you said, like it all for me comes back to, um, putting the client first and foremost. And that took a while to learn, right? Like I, I wanted to, to, I wanted to put my interest. I wanted to put my goals and, and the things that I wanted to do on the client. But the more I learned and the more I progressed through these things, the more that I realized that it's, it's really all about their goals and what they want to do. So when I first work with somebody, the question is like, what are you trying to achieve? And then my assessment process is driven by figuring out where they are right now and then where I have to take them. Right. And then from there, we also have to appreciate that people have certain expectations, right? They have certain, um, they have certain ideas of what a gym experience should be like. And so I think we have to be able to, to turn that and, and give them some of what they want as well as what they need. Right. And so I'm always very client centric and I'm always thinking, how can I put this person in positions to be successful? And so that forms kind of the foundation of, all of my other lenses and values through which I move, look at things, right? And so when it comes to things like, you know, there's so many models, like there's PRI and then, you know, Bill Hartman has kind of gone his own way and created his own model. Um, and I've studied that over the last few years. And, you know, I've, I've read and, and went through Lee's stuff for the last few years and really dove into that. Um, and I've looked into the models of people like Charlie Francis and Altus and Derek Hansen and guys who are teaching sprinting. And so there's so much information the key, I think, is to come back to movement, quality, and position first and foremost, mm -hmm. right? Because if I'm trying to drive some sort of change in a person, if I'm trying to help that client reach their goals, and I can't put them into positions to be successful, or I'm not putting them into positions to be successful, then my program is going to be derailed fairly quickly, right? And so my thought process is always, what movement options are available to this person? How does this person organize movement? And then how can I assess that and then figure out how I can choose exercises or coach them appropriately or design a program that allows them to achieve whatever goal they have while putting them in positions to be successful. And so I'm always thinking movement quality first and foremost before I add load, intensity, duration, anything like that, right? And then my other buckets are gonna be related to things like force production, right? So if I'm working with an athlete, I'm thinking like, do they have the force production capabilities to handle the tasks that I know they need to handle, right? Do they have the force production at a certain velocity to allow them to perform in whatever position or whatever task they're going to have to? Um, do they have the specific skill, the contextual skill, right? So if we're talking about somebody like a wide receiver, right? Are they able to apply the position and the force production to a cut that they need to make on a route or with ball in their hand to be successful on the field? And then from a capacity standpoint, um, I think that's really important to me as well across the board because we have to appreciate that energy is going to be the driver of all the things that we're trying to do, right? And so if I do not have the capability to continue to supply the substrates needed to supply the energy to perform work, then not only is movement quality going to be compromised as I fatigue, because we know, we know the first thing that goes with fatigue is motor control, right? So quality is going to decrease. And then on top of that, I'm not going to be able to recover as effectively. So if you look at like Aaron Davis and the people at Train Adapt Evolve, they talk about how energy allows me to form the structure that allows me to perform the function, right? And that's their model. And so I've drawn from their model and based on my first principles of movement quality first, right? Allowing for recovery to happen, putting people in positions to be successful um, and assessing their needs that kind of triangle really fits well in my program. So whether you're an athlete or whether you're a general population client, we always prioritize um, the building of a robust aerobic system, right? The building of capacity to perform work because that allows not only for the accumulation of more specific volume, but also the ability to uh, recover from whatever work we're doing and to form the structure even down to the cellular level that allows for a high level function. Um, and so to kind of bring that all back home, I think when you're a young coach, you have to begin to come 
to bring things to principles, right? You have to draw everything back to what values do you have as a coach? And for me, it's always going to come back to position and being able to put people in position to absorb and adapt to stress effectively. It's going to come to force production, specific skill, and then capacity. And then if we're talking about general population people and people who are just looking to look good and feel good, it's okay, if I'm trying to drive some sort of muscular hypertrophy or I'm trying to drive body composition goals or I'm trying to drive um, some sort of just change in, in wellness where they can feel they can move more freely and be pain-free, I'm going to look at outside factors as well, right? So I have to appreciate the holistic nature and the interaction of the person with their outside environment. So lifestyle is huge, right? And that's yeah. all part of the assessment is looking at things like sleep, things that work stress, um, relationships with other people, right? These things can derail your program because you're only seeing somebody a couple hours a week, right? And so you have to take into account what's going on outside of that program. And so when I'm looking and, and filtering these models that have come to me over the years, and this has come from trial and error, like I've failed so many times with these models and I've gone too deep into certain rabbit holes and come out the other side. And it's like, over time, you just begin to pull away much of the fluff and, and the methods and you distill things down to first principles and values. And then once you have that filtering system, you bounce any new information that you have off of that model that you've kind of constructed over the year. And if it doesn't fit the model, then it gets thrown away, right? And maybe you come back to it another time because your model evolves. And so the model begins to change over time. It, it evolves slowly and it allows you to filter information so that when you look at you know, things that are on Instagram or things that are on social media, like you can say, does this fit with my principles and my model and the things that I care about when I'm looking at a client or I'm assessing a client or I'm working with a client? 